Okay, well, I think we'll get started. So welcome everybody to Quantum's webinar today, Put Your Words to Work with Dragon Speech Recognition. I'm Rebecca Clark from Quantum, and we're really delighted to have Derek Austin, who's the um, product manager for uh, Dragon Speech Recognition in the Asia Pacific region with us today. Uh, so I'll just do a quick bit of webinar housekeeping before handing over to Derek. Um, so um, we will keep you muted during most of the webinar as we are recording it and just so everyone can hear properly. Um, if you please use Alt and A to mute yourself or click on the microphone button. And if you do wish to ask questions, we will have a question and answer session at the end. Uh, you can get to the uh, chat area if you're a keyboard user using Alt and H or clicking on the chat bubble. And um, you can also raise your hand if you really want to speak, but we'll mostly take questions during the chat. And we have got some that some of you um, submitted with your registration form, so we'll ask those as well. And as I said, the session is being recorded and we'll make it available to everyone afterwards. So, um, so for today, um, Derek will be giving us an overview and demonstration of Dragon, and then we'll have a question and answer session. So yeah, I'm I'll, without further ado, I will uh, hand over to Derek and uh, he, as I said, is the manager for Dragon in the Asia Pacific region. He's had over 25 years in um, the IT industry and uh, yeah, we look here forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much for joining us, Derek. Great. Thanks, Becky. It's good to be here. Just let me share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, we can't. We're all blind. <laughs> my apologies. Did I say so, that loud? <laughs> okay, so please, yeah, please do mute yourselves. If you're Sorry, honest. I haven't used Yeah, no, that's before. right. Thanks. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a crucial reminder because um, I haven't done a lot in the accessibility area for a while. So if I, if I uh, sound a little bit alien, please remind me what I should be saying. So um, just a bit about me. As Becky said, I've been with Nuance a long time. Um, since 2004, officially, I was consulting to them a little bit before that. Um, and before that, I was with a company called Learn It and House Speed, which uh, was the original, originally acquired Dragon from the company that actually wrote it way back um, in the 90s, Dragon Systems. I'm from Brisbane originally. Um, I've got a long interest in people and computers. I've got a background in psychology. I actually started a degree in psych, but um, you know, I, I think the situation in the universities is worse than it was then, but it still wasn't great in those days. So uh, I got lured away by the uh, filthy lucre of the computer industry and um, went from being paid $11,000 a year at University of Queensland to a little bit more at Griffith Uni for a year, setting up their computing environment there, and then got poached and went into private enterprise. As a result of that, I've lived overseas a fair bit in different countries in Europe and in, done a fair bit of work in Asia as well. Um, I, I went through several startups during the dot-com boom, which my wife uh, didn't let me forget, which is why I've been at Nuance for so long, probably. Um, the career highlight for me is probably working with Apple um, and the Newton mobile device just before Steve Jobs came back and killed it and sold us to it as a startup to another company. So I, I guess the main thing to say is I've got a, a background in social sciences, um, a little bit of knowledge of how things in accessibility work, um, and hopefully that will inform what I'm going to say today a little bit and feel free to ask any questions and correct me if I say anything, as I said, outside the boundaries. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about drag and I'm going to range a fairly, fairly widely from, from broad strategic sorts of things through to the nuts and bolts of how to use drag. And we haven't done a talk like this for a while and it's great to be working with Quantum. We've had um, oh, well over 100 people register for this event. So it's been really well received. And I think there's a lot of interest in speech recognition and how it works. So what I'll do um, is talk a little bit about nuance. Um, I promise I've only got three slides of that, but I, I think it's important to tell you about the company and where it's come from. I'll talk about speech recognition generally and how that works at the moment from my sort of perspective. Um, and then hone in more on Dragon. So how can Dragon help with accessibility needs? what products are available at the moment and so on. 
Um, and I'll give you a demo of Dragon Professional at the end of the session as well before we answer any questions. I'm, I, I may go off the standard corporate track to you. So if I express any opinions about the future of the industry or where things should be going there, they're my opinions, not my employers. Just a little bit about Nuance. Uh, I don't think many of you are aware of Nuance. Nuance at its height, we, we started off as ScanSoft with the original name and we did all the scanning software for Xerox Corporation in the States. So we did um, OmniPage, Paperport, PowerPDF, you may know those brands. At our largest, we were about a $2 billion company just under and we had about 14,000 people. Um, that's reasonably well-sized. I think that made us well in the I think we're about sixth or seventh largest in the, in the software industry at that time. For comparison, Adobe does about, I think it's 11 million, uh, 11 billion US dollars. Microsoft, depending on how you count it, probably does around 50 for its productivity software sort of business. So there's these big guys at the top and then there's a range of smaller companies. A few years ago, we got a, a new board, a new president, uh, a new CEO. And that resulted in the business being much more focused. So we basically sold off our imaging business to Kofax. Um, so all the OmniPage OCR sort of software is with Kofax now. We spun off a part of our business that was focused on uh, automotive systems about the sorts of voice navigation systems you have in cars and so on. And that's out there as a separate company now. And we focused on two main areas, healthcare and large enterprises, which is sort of call center customer service sorts of um, environments. And that's where we are at the moment. The non-healthcare dragon, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm gonna talk about today, we're, we're sitting in the healthcare business, but we're obviously quite distinctly different from the rest of that business. The company has really, over the last few years, changed a lot. Um, it's been, I have to say, it's been great working with them through the last difficult 12 months. Our new CEO has done a good, good job at getting the company into the 21st century. And um, I think we're, we're keen to get out there and help our customers achieve different things in all the, place, all the different parts of the business that we work. Where, we, where I work is mainly focused on making people more productive. The core issues out there in larger organizations in particular are things like professional burnout, documentation overload, um, getting people more focused on what they're meant to do when they're doing a job. So police is a standard example that we've got in America at the moment where um, they, police generally spend so much time just filling out paperwork. The added issue in the States is if they're looking down at, at a computer screen or filling out a form or something, somebody can come up and shoot them. So it's, uh, it's an interesting area to be working in. If you put it on social media, you, you get some very interesting responses about the police, but it's an area where the sort of automation we're talking about now is very important. The other thing is just staying competitive and compliance. A whole lot of industries like financial services recently has got focused on making sure that they produce the paperwork that um, the organizations need to be able to um, fulfill their obligations, make sure that they've said the right things to customers, et cetera. So just to emphasize that Nuance is a reasonably large company. It's very focused. It's, I feel like I can say it's a modern company now. I didn't feel that way before. Um, but having been there for, you know, 16 years now, more than that, nearly 20 years in a consulting capacity as well, it's a great company to work for and I'm actually very pleased to be there at the moment. So let's open that up now and look at speech recognition more generally. Um, we made speech recognition much more accurate. The figures I've got um, from a few years ago now just show that the average error rate for speech recognition in Dragon decreased from close to 20% to um, under 10% or 10% in, two, in 2012. It's, since then, it's actually got even better. That rate has continued and the number of errors in speech recognition is now very low indeed. So you'll see in our uh, material, we often claim 99%, up to 99% accuracy, and that is actually real. Particularly with the last two versions of Dragon, versions 14 and 15, the ease of use of the software became much higher Speech recognition, as you probably know, it starts with the speech, the waveforms in the air, and that's turned into ones and zeros, it's digitized. And the software pulls out the, first of all, the syllables that your language uses. So English has a particular set of syllables that it's using. Australian English is even more specific. And those then using an acoustic model have the syllables turned into words. 
Dragon is different from most speech recognition in that it's speaker dependent. So Dragon actually learns what you sound like and what you talk about. And if you correct it when it, make, when it makes a mistake, it will remember that error, hopefully, it's all statistical, and it will get it right next time you use the system. So this is an important, crucial difference. Most speech recognition systems work pretty much the same way at the moment in that they have, they need to get the syllables, they need to get the syllables into words and then do something with them. Dragon is quite unique in that it does that personalization part of the process. And that's what makes it so accurate, particularly for writing. The way it used to work is it used a, a very advanced statistical technique called hidden Markov models, um, where if you started with this sort of sentence in comparison with the prior examination dated June 2nd, 2014, the heart, what the statistical process did, it was look at the words around each word that you said and try and work out what they might be. So if you said in, for example, that might be in, it might be pin, it might be ink. Comparison, Longer words are actually easy to understand, easy to distinguish from other words. And it gets that without, it's got a probability of one, basically it thinks you said comparison and you did say comparison. But it goes along like this, looking at the context of each word to work out what you th it thinks you probably said. And that's based on the acoustic model, the language model, and the words that are around it, the three previous words that are behind a word. And that produced very accurate results. But with version 14, version 15, we've moved now to use neural networks. And this is depicted through this nifty graph down the bottom here, where you can see that instead of doing this left to right business, we've got these in, in this machine learning model, we've got two hidden layers where different interconnections can be made. So the machine learning, as you're probably aware, it's a black box, it looks at what's going on, and you have a model that will produce the output based on the hidden layers that it creates underneath. And this has proved to be much more accurate and much faster in particular now than the Markov models. So that all means that the speech recognition is now is very accurate. And what we know is that most people now have used things like Siri, Alexa, Google Home, and that's made speech recognition much more accepted, generally speaking. Our biggest uh, quarter ever of Dragon sales was uh, the one after Siri was released by Apple. That gave speech recognition like the stamp of approval, and it was out there and everybody knew about it. The Gartner Group, one of the consulting firms uh, that evaluates new technologies, they said at that point that speech recognition is ready for mainstream. They have this thing called the hype cycle, and they have technologies rated according to whether or not they'll make it into real use or not. And speech recognition have been working away along its little cycle that it has in its model. And at that time, a few years back, about four years ago, Gartner said, okay, speech recognition is now ready for mainstream use. The technology has basically grown up. The problems though that still exist are things that you'll probably all know about. Um, most of the things you have on your phones and in your homes and your smart speakers, even on your computers, they're focused on command and control. So uh, they work pretty well if you want to say send a message or turn on the lights, but they're not necessarily great for writing long pieces of text. Uh, the other thing that I think personally makes them difficult is that all of these systems have different grammars. So it's still reliant on you learning a particular set of commands that work with Siri, that work with Alexa, that work with Google Home. You can't just have a conversation with a device. We're still a long way away from that happening. We're still at the point where you need to learn specifically what you can say to turn on your lights, to um, send a text message on your phone, etc. cetera. Um, the other issue sometimes at the moment is that those systems that are out there on mobile devices in particular, they require online connections. You don't have, if you don't have an internet connection, you don't have any speech recognition. And having something that works sometimes and not other times is always a problem for adoption. It just makes it harder to use. So you, you might be a sort of person who would go and learn the grammar you need to understand to use Siri, but you don't necessarily want to rely on it if it only, it doesn't work in that spot in the center of Sydney where the, the buildings block the cells signal. Actually, Melbourne is the worst for that, I think. The other issue at the moment is that walled gardens make it harder for third parties like Nuance to provide voice command and control across the operating system. So uh, I'll talk more about the Mac later on, but that's a good example where 
uh, and Apple isn't unique in that point. There's a lot of advantages to the operating system vendors being able to tie up their environments. They can keep viruses out. They can uh, make things as fast as possible. They can ensure that the systems are secure and stable and safe for you to use. And that's a big issue at the moment. But that means that companies like Nuance have increasing difficulties in providing the sorts of things that the operating system vendors uh, are doing routinely. So things like opening a file, opening an application, sending data from one application to another, all those things start to get very hard once the operating system vendors start to close things down and make them secure. Luckily for us, Windows is this huge accretion of uh, coral that's piled up over the years and bits keep falling off here and there, but um, Bill Gates always had this theme of keeping uh, old things still working. So Dragon works fantastically well on Windows still. So that's a, some good news. And Dragon is still the most accurate speech recognition product for writing in particular, particularly outside North America. So speech recognition, English ate English even. So, if, you know, if you get Microsoft Word, apart from a few spelling differences between here and North America, you get the American product, it works for you pretty much as well as you need it to in Australia. Speech recognition is not necessarily the same. So um, if your speech recognition is tuned for American accents, it may have trouble recognizing the Australian accent with the current state of technology. This is particularly true for speech recognition. Outside North America, the performance is much lower for local accents. So that's one of the things that we think about a lot as well. Where we think things are going, where I think things are going, <clears throat> this is a path that we think is happening in healthcare. And I think it'll extend to other parts of business and work and so on as well. Where we are at the moment is that a lot of services are moving to the cloud. The reason people are doing that, there are many reasons. Some of them are about getting security so that uh, you're not reliant on, you know, you've got an IT organization, it's hard to get good IT people. The turnover with IT people is very high. Um, they didn't apply that Exchange server update three years ago, and that means suddenly the whole environment's been hacked. Whereas if it's in the cloud, um, not only will someone else do it for you, but you've also got someone to blame, which is often quite an important thing to, to have. The other thing that will become increase is important and will become increasingly important is adding rapid innovation to that mix. So being able to take um, something like speech recognition and then bolt on some piece of expertise. So if you're a lawyer, bolt on a practice management system. If you're an academic, bolt on some citations, research type software that gives you access to your discipline. Myriad of different sorts of intelligence that you can not um, lock in with basic speech recognition to give you more intelligence in what the speech recognition allows you to do. So that intelligence and workflow and workflow specialization is probably where we're headed next. That's kind of what the next step along will be is that the speech recognition starts, this, the recognition is pretty good now. And you're able to take that information, add commands, add extractions, add interactions, content analysis, all sorts of things that other suppliers can provide that bolt into the speech recognition context. This is what's happening in healthcare. We haven't done any of this in our part of the business yet, but that's probably how I think it will go. Where we're at after that is conversation starts to become the new user, user interface. And this is when the technology gets good enough for you to have a conversation with it. And for many people that will help them a lot. And all of that at the end will transform form the way we do work and how we, how we handle our daily living and, and get things done. But that's where I think speech recognition is at the moment. It'll get better over the next few years. It'll um, still remain difficult to use in terms of if you, if you want to be an Apple person, you need to learn how to talk to Siri. If you want to use Android, you need to use Android. If you want to use Microsoft, you need to use Microsoft. And even running a Microsoft app on your Apple iPhone doesn't necessarily help you. You'll still have to learn the Microsoft ecosystem. But overall, having those services in the cloud will mean that new developments in artificial intelligence, machine learning, all those things, will be able to be made available much more quickly and much more easily. So let's look at Dragon and how Dragon can help in that framework. This is, again, getting down to nuts and bolts and talking about the basics of how Dragon can help you as an individual. Dragon can help you by basically, first of all, giving you an alternative to typing. And this is where Dragon is probably most successful now, given the plethora of alternative assistants that have come out on different platforms. You can use your voice to write. 
you can speak probably three times faster than you can type. And you don't need to use a physical keyboard or your fingers if you're using Dragon. So that's the first thing that Dragon can help you with. The second thing is controlling your Windows computer. Not only can you enter text, you can also edit text. You can format it, you can move it around. So again, you don't need to use the keyboard to do that. Furthermore, you can use uh, Dragon for command and control and navigation. You can open apps, you can open files, you can move things around, you can choose menu items, etc. Finally, there's automation. So in this sense, you can save yourself time. So if there's tasks that you do all the time in terms of writing documents or whatever, you can use Dragon to create canned text, a boilerplate, uh, to fill out templates, uh, to fill out forms, um, even sophisticated document assembly. So if you do something very specialist where you need alternatives, so um, the classic one is always from healthcare where you've got a pathologist who might be dissecting a liver or something. And, you know, the color of the liver can be three things, green, brown, or something else. And you can have powerful macro commands that let you choose those items, which put in a paragraph which says the liver was brown and, and so on and so forth. So Dragon can help you do specialist tasks like that and make them much more efficient. Um, those are the things called voice commands and auto text. And they can be very simple from just putting in a little bit of text through to something quite complicated where you can do conditional completion. Um, Dragon Professional comes with a, a whole programming language built into it where you can do very powerful things indeed. So that's what Dragon can do for an individual. Obviously, there's extensions to that to work groups and all the rest, but we'll leave that aside now. Where does Dragon help you? So... Um, to do those things, there's several workflows it can implement for, you can use Dragon to implement for doing the dictation, for preparing documents. The best of those is probably using Dragon straight on the screen. So you, you can probably see that little um, red button at the top. This is the Dragon group Dragon bar. I click on that button or to use the, the plus key on my numeric keypad and that turns Dragon on. So the easiest thing to do is to just use Dragon in that way. Start Microsoft Word. Set font size to 24 points. Now I can use Dragon to dictate. Exclamation mark. Close window. Click don't save. So that's how Dragon can help you on the screen. And because you see the text straight away, you can correct it if there's a mistake. And what's more, you don't have to send it off to someone else to do anything necessarily. There's no waiting. You can use it straight away. The other ways you can use Dragon is for deferred dictation. So that means that you record your voice in some way. You can use an app on your phone to do that. You can use an old style, I shouldn't say old style. There's many new ones out there from our partners like uh, Philips, SBS. Um, use a recorder, or a digital recorder. There's still people using tape recorders out there, unfortunately. Uh, even an app on your tablet or your computer. You can record the audio and then send it to Dragon and Dragon will process it. And there's a few ways you can do that. You can do it manually just by going up to Dragon and here there's a, a command that says transcribe audio and you can say transcribe recording and that will go away and transcribe the file that you select. The other way you can do it is via watched folders. There's this thing called the auto transcribe folder agent in Dragon Professional and that will, you can set that up to just watch a folder. Um, so the demo I often did was I'd use my phone to record a dictation. Uh, the app I used to record it was a thing called Dictimus, a nice piece of German software, and it would send the file once I'd finished it back to my Dropbox on my computer. My computer would then, Dragon would be watching that folder, that directory on the computer for incoming dictations. It would open up the dictation, process it, turn it into a text file for me, and then I could open it up and look at it when I got back. And that auto transcribe folder agent can even do it for multiple people. So you can set Dragon up if you've got Dragon group and have you know six folders for your work group. All six people can send them all back to the one computer. As long as you've got a license to do it, you can have the processing done there. Third party correction, the last one there is where somebody else does the correction for you. So you can imagine that if you've got um, something you do in the field where maybe you interview somebody, financial advisor is a good example. You talk to somebody about their investments, you leave their office, you write up a quick summary of what the discussion was about, you send that back, maybe somebody else takes that, finishes it for you, files it away so that it's done 
um, and you don't have to go back to the office or do it later. So there's a few different workflows that you can use Dragon to help you with there. Who can use Dragon? Um, you really need to be able to speak in continuous sentences. So the original Dragon product was called Dragon Dictate. It's a huge brand name. Most people still talk about Dragon Dictate, but it meant that you had to speak like this. And the second generation of software that came out in 97 was called Dragon Naturally Speaking. And that meant that you could talk normally. And indeed, Dragon requires now that you speak normally because it uses that context information to work out what you've said. So you need to be able to speak um, continuously. You need to be able to, you need to be able to speak relative, relatively consistently. So if you've got um, an issue that causes your voice to uh, vary a lot from day to day, or for you to lose control of your voice, Dragon may or may not work for you. You'd, you'd have to try it and see, but you're probably not going to have much success with Dragon if you can't maintain something vaguely stable so that Dragon can develop a, a model for how you talk. Um, somebody in the pre-questions that we sent out for the webinar asked, how, do, how does it go with younger people? It works really well with younger people. Um, the main issue is whether they have the patience and the tolerance to actually learn some of the commands that they need to use for formatting text and so on. The, the process that was recommended, there's a, 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 um, a company in uh, Brisbane called uh, Dare Speech Pathology. And the approach they take up there is they treat it like a skill um, that you can acquire. So speech recognition doesn't even have to be dragon. It could be any kind of speech recognition. Dictation is a skill that you learn over time. And if kids start learning it when they're younger, it is something that by the time they get to, you know, year 11, year 12 in high school, where they can really benefit from this sort of technology. If they started when they were eight, they may not have got a great deal of benefit from it when they were eight, but by the time they're 15 or 16, that's when it starts to kick in. So I've put a link to the video of uh, the DARE folk discussing that at the end of the session here. So you might like to take a look at that if you're interested in that area. Miscellaneous tips. Um, dictation is a skill that you can learn. Uh, so you should practice it every day or every week. We've got some law firms that actually require new graduates to uh, stop typing and use Dragon, which they usually don't like, but actually assign them to partners and they have dictation practice. So the the new lawyer will go away and practice dictation, come back and get some tips on how they're doing it. This is a skill. The reason that law firms and other organizations do this is simply because you can be much more productive if you can think on your feet, which is what dictation is. And if you learn to say it, think of a sentence in your brain before you say it, then you can actually be really, really efficient at writing letters, writing file notes and so on. So that's why a lot of organizations do it. Speak normally in sentences. Used to say, try and speak like a newsreader. If you if you um, accentuate your uh, your diction, uh, Dragon can find it easy to understand you. Stand you. Um, learn to correct errors. Dragon, as I said, is personal. So if you correct it when it makes a mistake, um, it will get better over time. The other thing you can do, which I should have put on this list, is train it on your documents. So Dragon Professional will process all your Word documents, your outgoing emails and use that to learn how you speak, what words you use and what words you use together. So that too can improve the accuracy of Dragon for you. The last point is if you've got um, somebody who hasn't got um, use of their, their hands, Dragon can be set to recognize a wake up command. So you can say wake up and it'll wake up for you. Or, and also you can have Dragon set to come on active. So it will be listening when Windows is turned on, which may be helpful in some contexts as well. Mm -hmm. Dragon's compatibility with other programs. Um, it's rare these days to find a program that Dragon won't work with. Technically, Dragon interacts with the what are called text controls in the Windows operating system, and it understands about 50 or 60 of these things. Um, occasionally, it will find something old um, that it can't work well with. And when I say work with, what Dragon has to be able to do is find out what text is in a text field and know when it changes. If it knows those things, it can actually let you edit the text and do what's called full text control. Mostly, we can do that these days. If Dragon can't do that, uh, it has a dictation box, which is pops up a box in front of the, of the um, field that you're working in lets you enter the text and then you can transfer the text back into the field. That's not as um, efficient as just entering it straight in, but at least you can work with it. 
Uh, just to note that browsers are, are often a problem here because the technology in browsers tends to change weekly. Um, Google is, if you start looking at it, it's just amazing how far quickly it changes. So uh, sometimes something that worked last week won't work this week because they fiddled with some of the internals of the text controls. So um, again, that's happening less frequently than it used to, but browsers can be a little bit of a challenge, but you've got the dictation box to fall back on if you've got a particular website that's causing you problems. Um, screen readers. I have always seen that JAWS, and a lot of people ask about this in the pre-question, um, JAWS and the other couple of popular screen readers um, are all said to work with Dragon. And I've never got too deep into this myself, but I, I thought it's something I've always meant to do. So I actually downloaded the demo of JAWS yesterday and tried it out with Dragon because somebody mentioned a bug um, on either JAWS side or Dragon side where JAWS can't give you access to some of the correction capabilities in Dragon, which I verified by the way, whoever sent that one in, um, and I will report it. But JAWS and Dragon do work together. I think Becky can tell you about her experiences as well. Um, the, there is also some middleware. There's at least two middleware options. Uh, there's two products uh, from the same person, JSay and JDictate. There's somebody else who does a plugin as well, and they do plugins for the other comments for screen readers too. And in particular, if you say something in Dragon, they will say back what you've actually entered into the text field. So if you've got a, a vision impairment, you can actually hear what you've entered and see where the dragon made a mistake because dragon will make mistakes. So it's important to be able to do that. Um, I guess I was disappointed that there, there seems to have been nothing very much recently on the web about any of this. So um, if I can help anyone sort of who knows um, how this should all be configured, knows their experiences. I, I normally hate adding pieces of middleware to these things because middleware always breaks at some point or other when something's upgraded. But if anyone's got any feedback here, I'd love to help get that information out there in a more cohesive form. Just let me know. What do you need to run Dragon? This is another issue. So first of all, um, you need a Windows machine for the uh, Dragon Home and Dragon Professional platforms. Uh, base The base sort of level of a PC that you'll get these days with four gigs of memory is usually fine. Although if you're gonna beef up anything in a Dragon system, it's memory. And if you're using a lot of applications, give Dragon as much memory as you can. Give, make a system that's got more memory rather than less. Um, otherwise Dragon will work fairly well on just a bulk standard personal computer these days or a laptop. Uh, audio is much less than an issue it used to be. Those of you with long memories of Dragon, will know that we used to insist that you have noise cancelling headsets. Um, audio used to be a big problem with a lot of uh, manufacturers. They would put the microphone input next to a noisy uh, power supply or something like that. And the audio was often really bad. What's happened over the years, of course, is that the computers have got a lot better. So the audio quality is much better now. And also the software in Dragon has got better at, at sorting out the audio and understanding it. So most modern laptops, for example, if you look at the top of the cover, they have two holes, two microphones in the top, and they use those to triangulate to your mouth and exclude the noise from outside that area. So a lot of your laptop will probably have a basic noise cancelling microphone in it, and that will often work just fine for Dragon. Um, you'll get results that aren't as good if you're in a noisy environment. And in that case, a noise cancelling microphone, not a noise cancelling headphone, by the way, although that's good, but for other, other things, a noise cancelling microphone will give the best results. Um, these things come in a variety of forms, typically um, something you wear on your head, like I'm wearing now, something you hold like this Power Mic 3, which is something that we sell um, that started in emergency rooms and now is used by lots of people who don't want to put things on their heads. Um, that has, this has configurable keys. Um, um, Philips has something like this as well, similar sorts of deal. They have a wireless one too. Um, and there's a myriad of other suppliers of noise cancelling devices that are suitable. Array microphones, I've got a friend who's a barrister and he just has this bar underneath his monitor, which has multiple microphones in it. So it's sort of what's in your laptop power of six. It's got six microphones in it, I think, and it uses that to exclude the noise that's coming from the rest of the room. So that's what you need to run Dragon. Um, these are the benefits from a corporate perspective, but they're also pretty much individual benefits as well. So um, if you can speak fine, you can type up to, you can speak it up to 160 words per minute. Most people can't type anywhere near that speed. Uh, if you can do that, you can speak three times faster than you can type normally. 
getting up to speed on Dragon now, once you've got the software installed, is a 15-minute job, if that. Um, if you can do any of the automate automation things that I mentioned before, that will make you often three times or more faster. Um, the recognition rates now are very high indeed. Dragon, the most, the things that Dragon mostly has problems with now are things like, um, you know, Polish surnames and, and alternatives where there's multiple ways of selling, spelling the same thing. So proper names are the things that cause issues these days. And there's ways around that as well. Um, workplace health and safety. Um, there's, we had a partner, an American firm actually, that was doing a lot of work in China and they had a hundred people in China using Dragon doing text entry. I don't think it's ever been published, but they could predict who on that team would have a problem based on how many keystrokes they did. It was just a direct connection between how much typing you do and how injured you're going to get. Um, Dragon can help you avoid all of those problems to begin with, which is always the best way of doing it. But you can also use it, obviously, once people do have those issues with RSI, is using Dragon to rest your fingers and use your voice instead of your fingers to do text entry. Um, and of course, there's obviously money implications for all of this, and it can save you a lot of money if you're an organization. As an individual, it can save you a lot of time, which time is money after all. Um, this is important. What Dragon doesn't do? So. Dragon, again, some of these were questions that came in in advance of the presentation today. What Dragon doesn't do, it doesn't transcribe recordings with more than one speaker. So Dragon Professional Group will let you, sorry, Dragon Professional will let you transcribe a random recording by somebody you've got on tape. So if you've got a lecturer, you've got the microphone up close so you can get a really good recording. You can use Dragon to get a transcript of that. Not my idea, idea of a good way to study, but if you want to do that, you can. If you've got a politician doing a speech, um, one of our partners used to use a um, sort of Malcolm Fraser speech, I think. They just use that and use that as recognition. And, you, and uh, the pr President Obama, I think, is being digitized in this way too. So you can do it for one speaker, but you can't do it for multiple speakers. That means you can't use dragons for transcripts of meetings interviews, conversations, etc. The accuracy um, is just too low. There is software out there that claims to do this. Um, the accuracy rates are well less than 90% usually, and 90% might be fine for um, subtitling a video, for searching a video library, something like that. It's not good enough for professional meeting transcripts. And with that error rate, you may as well just retype it. It's usually more work to uh, correct a transcript and to go back and retype it. Um, we don't any longer have a Mac version of Dragon. I mentioned the walled gardens before. Um, it got too hard, unfortunately. Uh, the way Apple had set up the accessibility APIs was that we had to rely on every software vendor, including Apple, which was the biggest challenge, to be honest, to make decent versions of their applications that supported the kind of access that Dragon needed. So there wasn't one place we could go in Windows and we look at the system queue and get the keystrokes as they come in. We had to go to Word, get the information from Word. We had to go to Apple Mail, get the text from Apple Mail. And there was a huge difference in the quality of the implementation of the APIs. Um, there was a case of one Apple app where the, the whole interface disappeared completely in a new version and then came back again later. And um, it just, we, we couldn't, you know, the, the speech recognition for those of you that had used Dragon on Mac was very high. It was the same as Windows, but the interaction with the environment was just sad. And unfortunately, Dragon was getting blamed for all of that. So um, Apple has recently given developers a way of porting um, iPhone, iPad applications back to the Mac. There's some hope that that may make it back to the Mac in the future with Dragon. And we'll take our Dragon anywhere uh, application that runs on iOS and take that back to the Mac. But no no commitment, no announcement, no nothing on that as a yet. The technology's there, so it may actually happen. You can run Dragon fine on Parallels or VMware under a virtual machine. It's not officially supported, but it works just fine. Um, same comment for Linux. If you've got Linux, uh, if you've got a virtual machine on Linux, you can run Dragon on Windows there as well. The last point there is just a quick one. A lot of people want to use Dragon to help with language learning or language fluency evaluations. Um, so help you pronounce languages, second languages correctly or English correctly, or help you help um, 
work out how good somebody's English is and basically use it as a screening technique. It's kind of turning Dragon around the other way. Dragon wasn't built to evaluate what you say and compare it to a standard. Dragon was built to take what you say and match it to something. So it'll give you output and uh, it's not designed to give you diagnostics on what that's coming out as. So Dragon's not good for that. Okay, how are we going for time? 20 minutes left. Um, oh, we've got five minutes left, actually. I apologize. Um, oh, right. <laughs> sorry, Becky. Oh, no, that's fine. No, carry on. <laughs> okay, I can't see if anyone's fallen asleep yet, but I hope, <laughs> hope everyone's out there and alive. Uh, okay, where are the products at the moment? The, the products have changed a lot in the last few years. So we've got two individual products on Windows now, Dragon Professional Individual and Dragon Home. The current version is 15.61. There was a recent service pack release for um, that brought Dragon Home, I think, up to scratch. Dragon Professional was done a little bit before that. The differences between these two, they both have the same speech recognition. So they've both got Australian speech recognition. There's no time limits um, in terms of how long you can do speech recognition for because it's being done on your computer. There's no internet connection required and it learns from your mistakes. They're both the same there. Um, they can both do mouse grid commands. Um, mouse grid commands work like this. So if I turn Dragon on and say mouse grid, sorry, if I click the right button, it would help. Mouse grid, two, seven, click mouse, mouse click. You could see there what happened is I did a mouse click which advanced the slide one step forward, further. So you can actually use that mouse grid, five, six, to zoom in on a particular location that's, that's the dictation box that I mentioned before. It popped up then because PowerPoint doesn't support uh, rich text correction. Um, you can use that to control almost any arbitrary interface. So I, I used to use it to draw basic paintings in a paint program, which is pretty boring, but you can do it if you want to. Um, Dragon Home has supports one profile. So basically one profile, one computer. Dragon Professional Individual supports multiple profiles. Um, a profile is like uh, like a profile for how you speak, but some people like to have different profiles. So if you're a, um, you know, if you're a lawyer by day and your hobby is writing histories of ancient Syria or something, you might have a profile that you use for your hobby and a profile that you use for work. Um, that's possible. Uh, and Dragon Professional Individual, you, you can put um, the computer, the, the software on your computer at work, your computer at home and your laptop and run it on as many computers as you wish. Uh, Dragon Home has simple text commands. Uh, Dragon Professional Individual has those, but then also complex scripting with a command browser, advanced scripting using a visual basic style language, step-by-step -step commands and a macro recorder. Um, and the prices are there. The prices have recently increased, but that will give you some idea of the difference between the two. Dragon Professional has additional features as well. It does the transcription. So if you have a recording of your speech or somebody else's, it will transcribe it for you and turn it into a text file that you can correct. Support some additional applications with commands. So for example, I can say, next slide, previous slide, and Dragon will let me control some of the apps for me. Uh, it supports the power mic, that uh, device I showed you earlier, you can configure the keys within Dragon to turn things on automatically so you can press buttons and have things done. Some more sophistication with how you handle your speakers, the ability to upgrade profiles with new versions, import and export those profiles to move to other machines. Um, the ability to fill out forms using commands like next field and previous field. I'll show that to you shortly. Much more capability to manage your vocabulary. So you can actually, as I said, edit your vocabulary, add things, delete things, uh, manage multiple vocabularies. Uh, you can learn from your documents and emails. So Dragon will use that to create a vocabulary that's tailored for you. You can import and export custom words. So for example, if you work for NASA and you've got 400 abbreviations that you use as part of the missions that you look after, you can import those into Dragon and have them recognized as just a list of words that it'll take care of. Uh, playback and text-to-speech. Playback is where you can say, uh, select the last paragraph, play that back. And Dragon will play back your voice so you can see what it actually wrote down, what it transcribed based on what you said. 
And text-to-speech uses a computer voice to read something to you. So it's a more uh, synthetic way of hearing something, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. Uh, professional also includes Dragon Anywhere integration. So it will work with the mobile application so that uh, auto texts and word lists are integrated between the two. Um, it works with multiple dictation modes. So again, I can show you this in Dragon Group here. Um, under settings, you can say now listening for dictation and commands, but you've got these different modes. You can just uh, constrain it to dictation. You might be having trouble getting where something is recognized always as a command um, and you want to get over it. You can choose dictation. You can just recognize commands. You can just recognize numbers or you can just recognize spelling. So you can say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it will turn those into the appropriate characters. Uh, NS admin, there's a command line interface. So this makes it easy to automate some of the installation features in Dragon and make some changes without you having to do it. Someone can set it up for you. The auto transcribe folder agent that I mentioned before that trans automatically processes particular files as they come into a folders. And also the ability to use Dragon client with S Dragon client SDK. So um, the guys we were talking about before that do um, JSAY, JDictate, um, they use the, the bits and pieces in the API in Dragon to implement some advanced commands with JAWS. And that means you can use that facility with Dragon Professional Group as well. Okay, um, I'll mention briefly the larger scale products in case some of you are working for larger organizations. We have volume licensing available for Dragon Professional Group. I'm using Dragon Professional Group at the moment and I'm actually logged in. I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can see I've got a log out and a change password uh, in my Dragon command. And I'm talking to a server in the US actually at the moment. And that actually keeps track of all my texts and all the rest of it. So this is a brand new laptop that I got two weeks ago. And um, when I set up for the demo uh, yesterday, I was looking at what, what the commands I've got here. I can go into the command browser and I found all these wonderful um, commands that I'd used about a year ago uh, that were sitting there. So for example, there's a demo incident report for the New Zealand police. So again, if I say switch to Microsoft Word, start Microsoft Word. Helps to have Word running. Set font size to 24 points. Demo incident report. So for those of you who care, if you commit a crime in Auckland, this is what gets collected by the police about what you're doing. So that sort of thing can be shared between uh, both desktop and mobile devices as well. And you can use them to just bring up things like that. I'll show you how the forms work a bit in a quick demo later on. Um, okay, so resource wise, um, this is our website where you can go and get more information about the products I've mentioned. Shannon and Mal uh, did a great video with us a couple of years ago. We ran a series for two years called Dragonology where we had, and we had a couple of um, accessibility events as part of that. Um, one is about helping uh, kids with literacy challenges. And uh, that was really interesting. I learned a lot from that one. And we had uh, Peter Cracknell from Quantum and a guy called Jim Sprialis also talking about uh, disability and accessibility as well. So those two uh, videos are out there on YouTube and are ready and willing to be watched by you. So. Um, you'll be able to go and check those out and, and find out some more details from people who know a lot more about it. Uh, just briefly at the end, uh, we have this month introduced a new product called Dragon Professional Anywhere. Uh, again, for those of you in large organizations, this takes the, does that first step of that 10 year plan I was mentioning. So um, we're not discontinuing Dragon Professional Group. Um, it's out there and staying there, but we are now adding a a cloud option to the Dragon family as well. So that has all the advantages that I mentioned before, but it's um, the motivation I think is, we've got all these bells and whistles in uh, Dragon Professional, but a lot of them don't get used. Um, and these days the attitude to software has changed. People just want to use it. What you see is what you get. They don't want to muck around with it and have to read manuals. What's a manual, who knows? They just want to use it. So a lot of those features in group don't get used. And so this new generation gives you basically a slimmed down interface that just lets you enter text. And that's what it's designed to do. Um, deal with corporate environment where people just want to enter text. You can use Dragon Professional Group at this point where if you have particularly accessibility needs for staff, but Dragon Professional Anywhere is thin, easily managed, scales 
really well and has a nice software as a service model for getting it out there. So it has, it swings and roundabouts depending on what you'd want to do. This is just still at the beginning of its evolution. So I'm expecting that more accessibility capabilities will be added over the years. Um, okay, so that's what I've just mentioned. So I've, I've tried to do some demos as I went along. Um, just a couple of other things. So start Microsoft Word. And I'm using Word for this simply because it's, it's something that I think all of you are familiar with and it, it lends itself really well to these sorts of demonstrations. So more on the templates, I can, I can do things like um, automate correspondence. So if you're doing a whole lot of interviews for a job, perhaps you could make a thank you letter and you could say, thank you letter. And that would put in the um, details that you needed. You can use navigation commands like go to the end and the cursor moves down to the bottom there. Go to top. And you'll see it's back at the top again. Now, notice those pieces of text in square brackets. They're, they're basically uh, fields where I can enter data. So I can say to Dragon, next field, 16 March 21. Select 21, 2021, next field. Mr. James Joyce, next field, managing director, capitalize that, next field, 100 Miller Street, new line, North Sydney, NSW 2016, next field, dear Jim, capitalize, delete dear, Choose two, go to end, let us sign off. And that's the kind of thing you can do uh, to speed up the sorts of uh, correspondence you can do. Um, I think I've probably reached the end of my time. I hope you've, oh, I suppose just some formatting commands. So things like select the first paragraph, bold that. Make that 36 point, undo that, make that 36 points, italicize that, center that, right justify that, make that blue, left justify that, cut that, go to end, paste that. Okay, so thank you very much for your um, attention today. I hope that's been of use and i um, very happy to answer any questions of if people have them. Hello. Can yeah, you thank you, uh, Derek. That's great. Um, yeah, just for the for people using the screen readers there, what so when Derek brought up the Word document, it had lots of, it brought up a template. And um, when you said the sign off, it actually had a signature and things. So yeah, it's really quite, Impressive. Um, somebody had quickly asked um, what the retail prices were. They were on this, um, so I think it was 299 for the home and 729 for the professional. Correct me if I'm. That sounds about right. Right. All there, Derek. Um, yeah, so if anyone else has got any questions. Oh, there was one. Sorry, I'll just bring up the chat mode. Um, somebody had asked if it's available. Can you get it in another language such as Japanese or can we buy one with two languages? Yes, yeah, so um, this is this is a bit of, um, I've been, we, we've had, yeah, let me re, let me retrace. So there are, there are multiple uh, language versions of Dragon. We don't have a Japanese one anymore, but if you buy say French, German, Italian or whatever, um, in those versions, at least the professional versions of those products, you will get English by default because uh, almost everybody using Dragon professionally in those countries is, is also corresponding in English. So the recommendation is the moment is um, buy the, the foreign language version. I'm trying to get them back on our local price list again, but if you have a request, ask your partner, whoever you buy software from and we'll get you some advice. But if you buy the foreign language version that you want, you'll get English um, kind of for free at the European pricing at the moment. 
Okay, thank you. Oz. Oh, um, yeah, this uh, we've had a couple of questions about this as well. Actually, what about um, is there different pricing for edu education, or is there a schools version? We had a question about that. There is academic pricing um, for Dragon Professional Individual and Dragon Professional Group. Uh, we used okay. to, we have discon we have simplified our product range a lot in the last couple of years um, as sort of retail software has gone away. So we no longer have it. We used to have a student teacher edition, which we no longer have. Okay. Um, okay, somebody said that they ha they've heard that Dragon doesn't work with Zoom text fusion, um, only with older ones. I'll, I, that's our, yeah, the magnification reading software. That shouldn't be the case, but I can test that out. Um, so yeah, maybe you need to follow that one up with you. Um, okay. So I don't know, because I, I was testing the JAWS side of it. Um, I don't know what, what the interaction would be. Um, I don't know if the person that answered that question, if you want to be unmuted and... I wonder if I could make some comments. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yay. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for that comment I made at the beginning, which wasn't... <laughs> Oh, no, that's all right. You're okay. <laughs> Not at all. I, I've I, I don't mind getting kicked on these issues. <laughs> I've never actually done a webinar before, and I didn't realize, because I'd said before, could anyone hear me? No one answered, so I assumed I was muted. And it just came out, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I apologize for not thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started using Dragon because of wrist issues from reading Braille and typing because I'm an audio typist. Um, and as you said, you can't use Dragon for multiple speakers. So if anyone needs multiple speakers transcribed, they need me because that's my job. Yep. Um, I started off with Dragon Anywhere on my phone because I didn't know if I would actually want to use it or if it would work well, and it actually did. So I have I've uh, progressed to using Dragon on my L Braille 40, for those who know what that is, um, yeah. which is the quantum, well, quantum sell it. It's the, the new uh, Windows 10, you know, Focus 40 kind of chassis thing. Um, the... The middle where that I put on here was a thing I found for free on the internet called Dictation Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, yes. yeah. I don't actually know what it does, if anything, because it's, I never. It's kind I of the same. It. It's kind of the same as the JSA thing I was talking about before, and I actually tried to uh, test that out yesterday, and it got flagged as a virus on my corporate security. So. Um, oh, okay. I'm sure well, it's I, not, I, I but I couldn't try it. <laughs> I never have to start it up or do anything, so I don't actually know if it's doing anything or not, but I installed it. Um, I'm also using a steno mask. Um, I don't know if you know what that is, Derek. I do. It's, yeah. Um, it's a, a noise-cancelling microphone that you get for court reporters because I'm doing a lot of uh, voice writing type things where I'm listening to audio and repeating into Dragon. And I have to say, it has speeded up my work a lot. Um, the errors that I get are because of the way that I speak when I'm, when I'm repeating somebody else's words, if they take a break because they're thinking about what they're saying. Um, so I might get things like, if I say, um, we went down to the building site too and looked at, uh, if I have a break somewhere in that sentence, it might say, we went down to the building site too, but the second two will be a TO instead of a TOO. Um, and I think that's just because of the way that I'm speaking, not because of Dragon. Um, are you doing live transcription in meetings or are you working from recordings? No, I'm working from recordings. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a foot pedal and I've got all that sort of, you know, express scribe and all that sort of stuff set up. And I'm just, it's, voice writing basically listen and repeat um the there's thing... um there used there was a guy in <laughs> melbourne who um i think the product is called cat scribe the company's cat have you come across that one no i haven't but i'll look that up that he used to sit in things like parliamentary committees things like that and i could swear he'd be talking in like 300 words yeah uh, a minute. you can actually he... do courses in it um the, yeah. it's the thing in america they have courses 
I don't know if the courses are worth doing if you're in Australia or not. Um, and they're very expensive. So I haven't done it. I'm kind of self-taught. Okay. Um, because I'm doing freelance and I'm doing it from home and I'm doing recordings, it doesn't necessarily matter if I'm not at that speed. Uh-huh. Um, one thing you can do for people who are using Dragon without sight is I found a setting in there. I can't remember where I found it now. Um, that basically turns on a sound. So when Dragon hears something, it makes a, a pling kind of sound, which is quite annoying, but it's also good because you know that Dragon, the microphone is on and listening because I don't like to have the microphone on all the time um, in case it transcribes rude remarks that I make that people aren't supposed to hear. <laughs> um, <laughs> which it quite often could do because that is a bad habit that I have. Yeah. Um, the question now that I've got to all the end of my intro re remarks is I bought home because I didn't want some of the features of professional and I thought, well, I don't need that, I don't need that. But what I do need and home doesn't do is a bit more uh, flexibility in vocabs and things. So the question I have is, can you upgrade from home to professional or do you have to just buy professional? Unfortunately, you have to upgrade to professional now. So part of that um, cleaning out of options was to um, remove an upgrade SKU that used to exist for those products too. Actually, home, home has never been upgradable, I don't think. Um, but oh, okay. pre premium used to be upgradable to professional. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's gone, unfortunately. So um, Okay. Well, there's yeah. pros and cons because I don't know if professional would run on my L Braille. It might be too resource heavy. I don't know about that. Um, so I'd have to, I guess, look into whether it would actually run on the L. I didn't expect home to run on the L Braille, to be honest, but there you go. Yeah. Um, In the, the, main, the main drain is just the speech recognition engine. So uh, the bells and whistles are probably relatively not going to have too much of a difference. So you shouldn't yeah. have any problem if you wanted to upgrade. But yeah, okay. maybe risk. Um, in terms of using magnification with Dragon, I use, uh, I have JAWS ordinarily because it runs my Braille display, mostly is why I use it. Um, I have it with, I mostly run it with speech on demand, so it's not speaking. Um, and I, I put on the magnification that's just on Windows. Um, it's fine for seeing if the microphone is picking things up and it's moving. Because sometimes a problem that I have is it won't start. Like the microphone is on and if I blow into the steno mask, it, it goes pling because it, he, it hears me breathe. But when I start to talk, it doesn't start to listen to me. And I have to start, um, I have to say the first few words multiple times before it will begin to hear me. I don't know why that would be. Do you have any ideas, Derek? Um, what, what is the software making the ping? Is that part of the steno mask or is that a... No, option? that's a dragon. That's a dragon option. Yeah, it's um, a setting I found in dragon. Do you remember where it is? It'll be in settings somewhere. Um, well, there aren't I've, that many. I, I have never... I cannot recall ever coming across that one. Oh, okay. Um, so that might be the first place to look is find out where that command is happening. Yeah. And just see maybe if you've got try any, turning it off. Maybe try it. turning it off or um, yeah, yeah, like it might be taking time or it might be detecting something from the Ceno mask rather than from Dragon. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> hmm. um, thanks for that. Indeed. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks for that, and Dean. No, that's yeah. that's good, some good insight there. Um, we've I'll got see quite if a I few. Can find my mute button now. Uh, if you, you can do all, oh, there you go. Um, we've got a few other questions. Oh, somebody's asked the the price of the education version. Um, is that an individual? Well, we we can get. Yeah, it's academic licensing. Um, do 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 do. Sorry, bear with me. That that's actually that's right. that actually is. Um, pretty good value at the moment because for some reason um, some of the pricing went up but our US colleagues decided that for whatever reason they needed to keep the price
pricing low in the states um, because of how they do distribution work with governments and mm -hmm. things so okay well, we can have a look at that um and can a profile be created from an mp3 recording or Either. um mp3 i think is yes if you if you just google that online you'll um you'll get a list of supported formats and mp3 is certainly there see that yeah um, 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 the academic dragon professional price is recommended price is 389 okay well, that's, pretty, that's pretty good um Oh, yeah and what we're talking about the, the template um that you used with the fields in the template so was that created by word or through dragon or um you can pretty much do it any way you want so if, if i could share my screen again yeah sure I'll, uh, thanks okay so um the, the way it looks let me just hide this screen the way it looks in um in dragon is if you go up and choose command center and then manage custom commands and let me see so i've, I've got one here for um uh, got one for starting mail here which is slightly more interesting perhaps start a letter so this is different just to show you something different so this has just got text in here and can every i hope everyone can see that it's not too small but basically that's just formatted text that I have entered in there and um, you can add forms just by typing so you can manually edit any of this stuff if you want to it's got so it says when you say start a letter dragon will enter all of this stuff here so you can go around and edit this directly or you can just find a template such as um, let me just see if i've got something here that i prepared earlier um, i've got a sample interview so that that's that's actually a letter such as the one you just saw me there so here's one that's been filled out so i could just go in here and, and manually do this in word and go through and make the adjustments like that copy the whole thing and there's actually um, a voice command for this as well but just to show you it manually you can just copy that go in here and say command center uh, add a new auto text in this case. We'll just get rid of that one. I already had it open. Add a new auto text. And then I can just paste that in. Call it something like my full letter. Save it. Um, close that. Click file click file oh. Microsoft Bizarreness file menu oh. I had what I wanted full letter my full letter okay and it just put all that text in that I did so uh, there's more than one way to skin, skin a cat with all of this you can use um, Dragon directly to do the editing. Dragon also has its own um, word processor built into it called DragonPad. So you can actually open up DragonPad. This is the, this is the fastest word processing you'll ever get is just typing into um, DragonPad like this. So uh, you can just say, again, you might want to set the font to something among us. I'm now entering text into DragonPad. This is very fast indeed, full stop, new paragraph. I can also do auto punctuation, but it's turned off in this case, full stop. Okay. So more than one way of skinning a cat, as I said, uh, you can enter it directly in Dragon or you can just copy and paste from wherever you are before. Thank you. And um, a few more questions. What have we got? Um, so we said, is it available in other regions? I think we might have someone joined that's in a different area. I think nuance is all over the, the world. Isn't yeah, it? we're, <laughs> we're pretty much all over the world. Um, I don't, if you, I don't know where you are, but, um, yeah, I mean, you can use, probably go to our US store. I think, uh, if you want to buy something, um, mm -hmm. 
Um, we've got a few questions about using it with a screen magnifier. I haven't tested it a lot with Zoom text lately. Or, oh, can you use Dragon to adjust the magnification or move around on the screen? I'm not 100% sure. The, the thing to try with Dragon is if you've got an app with keyboard shortcuts, mm -hmm. um, Dragon can, you can just send a key press by saying, you know, send escape, send control C, and it will send those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you've got if you've got a, an app that's set up to use shortcuts properly, then you can just use you can use those commands directly to just send key presses, or you can create your own um, uh, voice commands that work in that application to navigate around. So that that mm -hmm. might be something that will help. Yeah, and I don't think there's any reason why it shouldn't um, shouldn't work with it. I mean, the other thing is the most recent talking of voice recognition being universal. The latest versions of Zoom Text have got some voice assistance in them as well so, um, yeah and I, I saw um i saw um jaws had some stuff in it as well but yeah it, so they've just recently started doing yeah. some more things like that so yeah there's a couple of ways you could do that but yeah if you've got dragon you could do that uh does dragon home or professional include the dragon anywhere or is that, that so that it can be used on an ios device yeah they're all they're separately licensed at the moment so dragon anywhere is cloud-based and um you pay a, a an annual subscription to that one mm -hmm. you can get it for a free trial if you want to try it out and see how it works okay yeah. um okay and yeah people can buy dragon through quantum yep um well, <laughs> <it's a call. laughs> <Thankfully. So laughs> that's fine <laughs> um, and yeah i think that's oh and um, yeah some people asking about the group licensing so yeah we, we can organize yeah, quotes for fantastic for group or whatever licensing so um with that i might just share my screen again and put up our contact details so thank you to everybody who uh, has attended today um so if if people are interested in a demonstration um like individual demonstration then um you can contact us on quantumrlv.com.au or call us 1300 883 853 or our info at quantumrlv.com.au. So thank you ever so much, Derek. It's been really informative and yeah, Dragon's such a powerful, powerful uh, product. Thank, thanks everyone for coming and Great. thanks for having given me the chance to speak to you. It's been fun. Great. Okay. We'll leave it there and I'll, we'll get the recording around to people. So thank you and have a good afternoon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yes.